In this video, I'm gonna show you how to optimize a blog post for maximum SEO ranking ability. Now, this is going to be a checklist for how to get your on-page SEO dialed in correctly so that you have a shot at ranking high on the first page of organic Google results. This is not a guarantee of ranking number one, however. There's a lot that goes into ranking your content high in organic search that we're going to talk about in this video. However, what we're focusing our main strategies on here are the on-page things that you have a lot of control over. Now, we're not going to be diving deep into how to get guest posts, how to get backlinks, how to share your uh, content and get it to go viral. Those are things for another day. Today we're focusing specifically on the on-page SEO strategies that you need to be doing in order to even get your content considered to rank high in organic search. So let's do it. All right, now let's talk about on-page SEO. We're gonna be doing this using an example of one of my most recent blog posts, one that's been doing pretty well um, despite being published just a couple of days before um, actually recording this video. So it's only been live for two days, although it's already ranking on the first page of Google search results. Now granted, the term blogging statistics isn't the most competitive term out there in the world, but there are a few hundred monthly searches, right? So that's, that is a meaningful number of people coming to my blog. Now let's pop on over to the WP admin behind the scenes for this blog post. Now this is the WordPress editor for that exact post we were just looking at, right? So when you go to all posts, you can navigate to this post on your blog. And we're gonna start by talking about headlines. What makes a good headline? Because this is really important for getting your content to rank well in organic search. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of leading with a number, especially if it's something that's tutorial, um, how-to based, right? So how many steps are in your article? Maybe that's, you know, 10 steps to accomplishing X, Y, Z. Um, 32 blogging statistics, right? Um, writing a clever headline is something that's very important. Um, you know, I, I was just doing some research on this. Six out of 10 people report only reading a blog article's headline before sharing it on social media channels like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, right? So having an important headline is important in not just getting people to share your content, but getting your content to rank well because Google knows that people, or that content that ranks well gets shared the most, right? So this is very important. Um, I've got a lot of uh, content about how to write effective headlines in my uh, blog post about how to write a blog post. Um, but the basics of it are that I recommend leading with a number if you possibly can. Um, it catches the attention of your potential readers, people searching on, on the search engines, right? Um, and it's very important to get your keyword phrase, your target keyword phrase in very, very early in the title. So for me, obviously, blogging statistics is the keyword phrase I'm going after here. You can see it bolded in the intro sections of my article here. I've got it in the first sentence. That's another important factor to consider for optimizing your blog posts, having your keyword phrase ideally in the very first sentence of your article. Um, and then bold it if you can. I, I'm a big believer in bolding as a signal to the search engines that this is what your article's about. Um, so I've got it in here in the second sentence and the third sentence and then, you know, variations of it on throughout statistics about blogging, um, you know, statistics about how to blog, content marketing statistics for bloggers, things like that, right? So it's important to have variations of your keyword phrase weaved in throughout, not just trying to pound it over the head with a thousand mentions of the same keyword phrase. So switch it up a bit. Um, another last note on, um, headlines. I'm a big fan of parentheses. I think it, it creates kind of a, um, a stopping point visually for people that are scanning a page you know, it's something that'll jump out at them as being a little bit more unique. And then naturally for something that's timely like this, people want relevant information, right? So in 2019, that's important for me to include in this as well. Um, now again, this is the on page headline for my article below. We'll talk about the SEO headline. But first, um, I want to really touch on the importance of your permalink. This is the URL that people will navigate. This is what they're going to see in their address bar when they are on your blog post. This is extremely important. This is almost as important as a headline. This tells the search engines what your article is about. So it's 
very, very crucial um, that you include at least your core keyword phrase in the URL of your blog post. Now, I, I'm a big fan of very clean, simple URLs. I'm a minimalist when it comes to setting permalinks. So for me, I like keeping it to as few words as possible. Um, typically just my core keyword phrase. And I'll omit things um, things like to or a or the. Um, for example, my how to start a blog article, um, which ranks on the first page of Google searches as well. My URL for that is how-start-blog. I think it looks clean. It's simple. It's easy to read and digest as a searcher. Um, and personally, I'm a big fan of just keeping it clean and simple and minimalist. So that's my advice on that front. Um, now let's go ahead and jump down to uh, categories. Um, categories are very important for readers who are going to be navigating your site. Now, I'm very uh, careful to categorize posts typically only as one category. I want it to be very clear what this article is about from a site search standpoint. So this article, definitely about blogging, gets the check mark. Under meta tags here, um, you know, there's been a lot of chatter out there about whether or not meta tags are even important anymore as an SEO ranking factor. But, um, you know, call it superstition, call it um, just being old school. But I like to include somewhere between five and 10 meta tags typically. Um, there's no reason to go super crazy on this. However, spend, you know, 15, 20 seconds throwing down meta tags that are related to. Um, your core keyword phrase. So blog statistics, blogging statistics, blogging industry statistics. These are the kinds of things that people are going to be searching for. And I just want to keep um, reinforcing to the search engines that this is what my article is about. A featured image here, um, you know, a quick note on image alt tags. Um, I'm just going to show you with kind of a random image here. Um, but important with a featured image to have something that pops, visually stands out, right? Because Google sometimes ranks their images or, or will display images near the top of search rankings. And so having your image up there as something that pops um, to, to potential readers is going to make you stand out. Now, a note on image alt tags real quick. If you go to edit, you'll be able to see that I've got alternative text here, and that describes the purpose of the image. Now, I am a very big proponent of uh, trying to make sure that my keyword phrase is included in as many of these images as possible in the alternative text for these images. Um, it's important that you don't just keyword stuff into every single image. Um, sometimes you can get dinged for trying to game the search algorithms by doing that. However, um, for every image on your blog post that is somewhat related to the target keyword phrase, the topic at hand for the article, um, I highly recommend including it. Um, and don't just use the same image alt text um, for every image on your site, right? Switch it up. Now let's hop down to what is my favorite WordPress plugin, um, Yoast SEO. And uh, this is basically my guide to making sure that each blog post of mine is optimized for on-page SEO before I hit publish. And I'm going to show you where you can grab Yoast SEO real quick. Um, this is your WordPress dashboard. This is where you land when you're logged in. If you click on plugins, here we go. We go to add new. And if you search, actually under popular, I'm sure Yoast is at the top. But if you search for Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T, you're going to see Yoast SEO near the top. Now, I am due for an update here of my plugin, but what you're going to see is an install now button if you haven't yet installed Yoast SEO on your site. So if you don't have Yoast yet, do it. It's free. Um, check this out. 26,718 reviews. Um, it's truly an amazing free product. Um, I say that not as someone who's affiliated with them at all. I earn nothing if you sign up for Yoast. Um, I just genuinely find it to be an extremely useful plugin. So once you get Yoast SEO installed onto your blog, you're going to see this little uh, box at the bottom of your blog post now. Um, you can show and hide this. This is your snippet preview. This is what Yoast is telling you is most likely to appear um, as far as information about your blog post in Google searches. There's a preview they've created, right? So this is your URL. You can see blogging-statistics um, pulling in right there, right? So it's clean. It's simple. It's your keyword phrase. 
your headline. Now, this is actually um, pretty important. Um, sometimes when you write a longer form headline for your on-page headline of your blog post, um, it might not fit into search engines, right? So uh, your search engine text for a headline has a maximum number of characters that are allowed. Now, here you'll notice that my, my SEO title is a little bit different from the on-page title that I have for my blog post. Um, but I've, I've sort of tweaked it. Um, it says to blog smarter here instead of um, up above the on-page headline says to improve your blogging strategy in the parentheses in 2019, right? Um, so for the SEO version of the title, I've shortened it up a bit without losing the purpose of my uh, headline, right? So this is important. This little green bar will show you as you, um, you know, as you get towards the end of your character limit, it'll turn red. So it'll indicate where you need to stop. Um, and sometimes I've found that, you know, maybe search engines will clip your title a few characters short. Maybe it'll allow a few more characters than Yoast suggests it will. There's a little bit of variation here, so you can play around with it. For the slug, I don't recommend touching this at all. Control your permalink up above um, where we were controlling the URL originally. Now, the meta description. Um, by default, if you don't input something in the meta description field, Google and other search engines are going to just pull in the first couple sentences of written content on your blog post. Now, sometimes that actually works out okay. Um, however, if you're not writing your first few paragraphs with an SEO optimized focus, then you're going to get some content that's not going to be working for you. So I recommend writing a meta description that, again, incorporates your target keyword phrase right up top. First sentence, got to do it. Um, and then provides just a few um, insights about what this blog post is going to be about. Something that's going to hook the reader. Someone who's curious about clicking on your article but hasn't done so yet. So meta description, very important again. Um, and let's expand the readability analysis here. So this is getting into kind of the weeds um, for most new bloggers. However, if you're um, pretty pretty anal about writing, then this is gonna be something you're gonna like. So subheading distribution, three sections of my text are longer than 300 words and are not separated by subheadings, right? So this is just sort of reinforcing uh, best practices in terms of how to make your blog content more easily read by people who come to it, right? Um, not using words that are too complex. It does a reading ease test. It gives you a score on how easy your blog post is to read. Um, it gives you a bunch of sort of simple guidelines. Paragraph length is something I will say um, is very important. I want to show you examples here. If you'll notice, I very rarely go beyond one or two lines vertically in content for my blog posts, right? So here's here's an example of a paragraph that's, that uh, spreads down to the third vertical line. That's fairly rare for my content. Um, I'm trying to make content very easily read, digestible. I don't want to scare people away. And that's very important for increasing your readability of your blog post. SEO-wise, not a huge contributing factor. Um, but here in the focus key phrase section, um, this is where you're going to type in the target keyword phrase that you want this article to rank for. Um, and below here, you're going to get a whole bunch of recommendations for how to improve your on-page SEO based on this keyword phrase that you've got input here. So this is very important. You've got to type this in if you hope to get actual good optimization tips from the Yoast plugin. Um, it'll tell you things about your meta description length. Now, I personally um, think this is a matter of dispute. 156 characters. I've seen some of my articles get much more text um, listed in the meta description. So it kind of depends. There's a little variance to this. Um, but if you go a little bit over, it's better than being under. Maximize the real estate that you're going to use. Image alt attributes. Um, you know, all of my image alt tags have my key phrase in them for this post. And, and they suggest that that's a bit much. Now, personally... I haven't experienced um, a negative impact from showcasing the target keyword phrase in my image alt titles um, pretty heavily. So personally, as long as I'm not doing it in, you know, a hundred images on a single blog post, I think generally um, you're going to be okay. Um, again, there's just eight images on this blog post. Key phrase and title. Um, I've got the key phrase in my title for the SEO, but not at the beginning. That's not correct. 
So sometimes there will be mistakes in, in the optimization suggestions here. Um, you could see in the first sentence of my blog post that I do have uh, the key phrase blogging statistics right here. So double check if something looks fishy. Um, however, there are lots of very, very helpful recommendations. Um, we don't need to go through absolutely everything um, because the Yoast plugin is going to show you what you should be doing, how to consider um, changes to make. Make sure you have outbound links, right? So don't link to competitor content. I wouldn't want to link to another article that is specifically about blogging statistics from this piece of mine because that tells the search engines crawling my article that, hey, this other article article about blogging statistics is more authoritative because it's linking to it from here and it's older. So my advice on outbound links, don't link to directly competitive content. And if you must, if you absolutely have to, be sure to no follow that link. Internal links, always link internally to related content. I recommend a minimum of five internal links. Um, if you can do more, definitely do more. Um, there's not really much of an upward limit as, as long as you're not making your content too overly stuffed with links, right? Um, key phrase and introduction, key phrase length, key phrase density. Um, these are all really important contributing factors to getting your on-page SEO right. Um, and this is more of a ratio, right? So my, my key phrase blogging statistics, it was mentioned 23 times um, out of <clears throat> out of 2000 words. So having a keyword density of that sort of ratio is what I'm typically aiming for around one to 2% keyword density. And that's really it as far as on-page SEO optimizations you should be making. Again, now that we've gotten through the tactical components of how to get your on-page SEO right for every single blog post of your site, I want to reiterate that the important factors in actually ranking are the off-page SEO, right? So the things like guest posting to get high authority, quality, natural backlinks to your articles. That's going to be a major contributing factor. Going out and creating a shareable interest that's optimized for Pinterest, right? Getting a lot of shares on Pinterest. Another uh, signal to search engines that your content is highly shareable, that people are enjoying it. Getting it somewhat viral on Facebook, on Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever your target audience is spending time, that's where you should be sharing your content. You want to engage with users on different types of communities, niche uh, platforms where your readers are spending time and bring them to your site. All of these factors in conjunction with getting your on-page SEO right is what's going to contribute to being able to rank your content high in organic search. So good luck.